Age 261. A violent storm erupts on planet Namek, wiping out most of the planet's inhabitants. Fearing the end of his people, the Namekian Katas puts his son in a spaceship and sends him to an unknown destination, with the hope that Namek will live on through him. Age 762. Terror strikes Namek again as the galactic tyrant Frieza invades with intent to use the Namekian Dragon Balls for eternal life. Frieza's plans are ultimately thwarted by Goku, but Namek is destroyed in the process. Back on Earth, the Dragon Balls are used to restore Namek and its inhabitants. Piccolo, now able to return to the home he never knew, decides to remain on Earth, where he finds peace and tranquility next to a roaring waterfall. His meditation is short-lived as he receives an unwelcome visit from his friend Gohan along with his pet dragon, Icarus. Wait, did we do this one already? Approximately 500 years before the events of Dragon Ball Z, a nameless baby Namekian was sent off-world to avoid the planet's impending extinction. The baby landed on Planet Slug, where a rare mutation among Namekians began to take hold of him, changing his innocent heart to one of pure evil. The new Super Namekian took the name of his new homeworld for himself, and soon Slug left to begin his conquest of the galaxy. For half a millennium, he conquered planet after planet while his age slowly got the best of him, until Slug reached planet Earth and found seven familiar orbs. Lord Slug can't happen for many of the same reasons as the previous film. Goku's wardrobe and skill set once again lock these events in after the Saiyan Saga, but dialogue between Goku and King Kai in the Japanese dub also put this film after Namek. With the exception of Goku's lack of ability to transform into a full-fledged Super Saiyan, this makes describing why Lord Slug can't happen not much more than a repeat of Tree of Might. But that's exactly the point. Lord Slug intentionally shares similarities with its predecessor. This film marks the second occurrence of Icarus, a character exclusive to the movies who made his debut in Tree of Might. This is also the second time we see the old Namekian stretchy arm technique, which also debuted in Tree of Might and is a movie exclusive. These were included in Lord Slug for a reason. For the first time in the series, Lord Slug is a direct sequel to the previous film. The use of recurring characters and techniques wasn't from a lack of fresh ideas, it was to establish continuity in the movie timeline and there's a big chunk of evidence to back this up. In the opening scene of Lord Slug, we see Piccolo meditating by a waterfall. But what was Piccolo doing at the very end of Tree of Might? You guessed it, meditating by a waterfall. Lord Slug was meant to pick up right where the previous film left off and continue a pattern started with Tree of Might that wouldn't break for a long time. But we'll get to that. And just in case you're still not convinced, Bulma has the same hairstyle in both movies. <laughs> And that's why Lord Slug can't happen. Hey, thanks for watching our new video. If you liked it, be sure to show us with that like button. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with future videos. And if you haven't seen them yet, we've got links to our first three in the description below.